Good afternoon, Jags. This is Fahad. Today is Wednesday, November 18th. Let's get started. A brand new presentation, another one uh, for the individual stocks in Jaguar Media. And this time, once again, we have Chronicle, who is going to provide this bullish preview on a company called Ergo, symbol E-A-R, Ergo. Hi, Chronicle. How are you doing? Hey, Fahad. Um, morning. I'm doing something a little different today, uh, basically a primer on a company called Ergo, which is a recent IPO. We've gotten questions about this company from a couple clients recently, and so we decided to put together this video. Yeah, uh, just a reminder to everybody, uh, when Chronicle starts off and he says, good morning, that's because he's in Malaysia. What time is it over there right now? Um, it's past midnight. It's actually uh, Thursday now. <laughs> Well, let's try to wrap this up as soon as possible so you can get to bed. And I always appreciate doing this. All right, fantastic. Now, uh, Ergo, just my quick thoughts, knowing the company a little bit, and I would love to hear more and understand more about this company during this presentation, but I'm very excited about this company uh, because from the high-level view that I've seen uh, so far in your presentation and the research now, this is a potential major disruptor to an industry that has not innovated itself for a long period of time. And it reminds me a lot of how Invisalign, which is made by Align Tech, was a disruptor, a big, big disruptor in the dental industry. And in this case, this company, Ergo, could be similar, very big disruptor in the hearing aid industry, which is an industry, once again, that is just old school, same, method same methodology, same experiences for a long, long period of time and has not really invented itself for quite some time. So with that said, let's get started. Tell me about it. Sure. So uh, Ergo is a relatively young company. It, it was established in 2010 under the name uh, Aria Innovations before they changed their name to Ergo in 2014. And today they are a pro producer and seller of in-the-canal hearing aid devices for mild to moderate hearing loss, which are um, FDA approved. And these de devices are fully rechargeable and uh, nearly invisible when they're worn. They can also be customized through their own um, Ergo mobile app, which allows users to adjust certain audio settings, such as the bass and treble. And you can also create presets of settings based on your surroundings. For example, you could preset uh, for how you want your hearing aid to behave in a cafe or perhaps a concert or a business meeting and so on. And this mobile app also connects to a telehealth service for um remote consultation with one of the 27 licensed hearing professionals that have partnered with the company. Um, now, looking through filings and website information, Ergo appears to have three main goals. Their first goal is to minimize the shame or a social stigma associated with wearing fully visible hearing aids. Uh, believe it or not, the social stigma and embarrassment that's associated with being seen wearing a hearing aid is a major reason why people with hearing loss choose to go without a hearing aid. And so Ergo has designed their hearing aids to be almost invisible when worn. And if you notice, their devices are also colored in black so that they blend into the darkness of the ear canal. So that's the first goal. Second goal is to simultaneously deliver comfort, performance, and design, which is a rare combination when it comes to in the canal devices, because Usually with such devices, people have to make sacrifices on one of the three. So basically, um, Ergo has found a way to offer a high fidelity multi-channel compression system, which helps to um, amplify the acoustics. And um, they've also found a way to eliminate the annoying feedback that comes with such devices. And as a result, their devices have an added stable gain of 24 decibels, which is impressive considering it's in the canal. And now the company's last goal has to do with modernizing the hearing aid industry. First off, if you notice, um, the traditional hearing aid is still very much backwards and outdated um, because most providers are doing business through multi-layer channels and through health providers rather than dealing directly with the customer. Well, Ergo is different because the company sells its devices directly uh, to consumers, either over the phone or through its website. And then, if we if we go through the um, if we look at the the in the mobile app integration and the telehealth services as well, um, 
and and also their sleek corporate branding and logo, which makes uh, the company look very cool and modern, we can see they're aiming to revolutionize this backwards industry. On the next slide, this is um, an important highlight of the industry as we compare Ergo to how big the market potential is here and who are the biggest competitors that this is likely trying to disrupt. Um, Tell me about the biggest differences or advantages of this company versus the traditional methods of getting a hearing aid. Right. So first of all, as I've said, um, Ergo sells directly to the customer rather than through intermediaries like most competitors. And to fee further speed up the process, the company also provides online DIY hearing tests to do away with the need for in-person health visits. On top of that, Ergo also carries out insurance claims processing for its customers. And so what this ultimately means is that Ergo hearing aids can be purchased and delivered to the customer within three to five business days versus the weeks or months it takes to acquire a more traditional hearing aid. Next point, um, as I mentioned on the previous slide, Ergo has, a found, has found a way to offer um, the holy trinity of comfort, performance, and design. And then the last point, just to build on what I said with regards to their sleek brand image, and direct to consumer model. Um, I think this is what gives them an edge because even though the entire industry is highly competitive with over 20 other major competitors in the US alone, the weird thing is that roughly 80% of American hearing aid customers are not aware of what brand of device they own. And this has been due to lousy marketing and branding efforts by all the incumbents. But with Ergo, because of how they've gone about their branding, it's virtually impossible that their customers will not know um, that they are using Ergo devices. Now, uh, let's quickly... Go ahead, sorry. Um, let, let's quickly take a look at their offerings on the next slide. Um, they basically have three models. The first one is the Ergo Max, which currently goes for 1,850. This is the lowest end, and it, it offers everything um, with the aforementioned acoustic advantages, but it doesn't come with uh, mobile app integration. And then the next one, we have the Neo, which is the most popular offering, and it goes for 2,350. It's every, it's the max with um, mobile app functionality, basically. And then lastly, we have the Ergo Neo Hi-Fi, which goes for under just under 3,000. Um, it offers everything from all sorts of attachments, best sound performance, and a default two-year warranty. But I think the important thing here is that all three of these models cost well below industry average of four and a half grand. And if we combine this with how purchasing only takes three to five business days, this is likely going to help the company's efforts in capturing market share. And, and I think this is the absolute crust of this presentation and why I like this company so much, because it's not only just a technological advantage that the company is showing with this product compared to the traditional hearing aid, but it's also a major difference in the price points between this and traditional hearing aids. I mean, it, I've always wondered this, why the hearing aid in the US costs 4,000, 5,000, $6,000, depending how much his insurance is picking up or not, or what kind of hearing aid you're getting. And here, the highest end of the offering that the company has, which is called Ergo Neo Hi-Fi, is priced at about, 30%, uh, 35% below the traditional hearing aid piece that is sold in the market with much more functionalities than anything else. Now, combine this with a view. Another part that I really like is that the company is able to cut the price down so much for average consumer and still maintain very strong gross margins at 65%, which by the way, improves substantially from the low 50% um, from a year ago. So from the economies of a scale, they're able to actually produce a pretty profitable business all around it as well, isn't it? Yeah, so um, I, I completely agree. So if we look at the next slide, um, so before I go into the headline financials, if anyone wants to know how Ergo organizes its revenue streams and why insurance processing is going to play a big part down the road, that's in the write-up on page three. But uh, now looking at the headline numbers, we can see the company is enjoying accelerated revenue growth. So currently at 98% on year as of uh, 1H20 versus 42% um, a year ago. 
and uh, gross margins, as you said, as you've said, has um, improved to 65.5 percent versus year ago 52. The main drivers of this gross margin improvement are the average selling prices of shipments. So um, they're basically starting to sell more of the neo and high fives versus the max, and um, also a decrease in um, customer returns. But on the flip side, as we can see, um, it's not a profitable company, and the company admits that it may never be. Um, and although operating lo losses have narrowed slightly this year, it was mostly just because of lower expenses due to COVID-19. So we should expect those losses to widen again after the pandemic. Um, but, but as long as gross margins are high and uh, revenue is continuing to accelerate, I don't think the market will pay too much attention to that. Yeah, so a couple of points that I would like to add to this. Um, you know, uh, so here's a company that posted in the first six months of 2020 with a 98% year over year growth rate on top line revenues, which was more than double of the 42% growth rate company posted in 2019. Now, with that said, important thing over here is that that 98% growth rate takes their current annualized run rate to uh to about uh for six months was 28 million and so we talk about if you double that for this for the second half of 2020 we're looking about 56 to 60 million dollars in in revenues currently the reason why i'm trying to get into this is because if that's the annual run rate right now about 60 million give or take some and the average hearing, hearing piece that they sell is about $2,200, $2,300. We can do a rough math to arrive. Basically, the company sold, how, what would you say, about uh, 15,000, 20,000 cases, something like that for the, for the hearing. I think the math is a little bit blurry on this one because we need to, because the company does not disclose that. But whatever that number is, 10, 15, 20, 25,000 cases, compare that to the, to the opportunity. Hearing loss is currently the third largest medical condition in the United States with an estimated 44 million people affected. And um, ergo devices cater to mild and moderate hearing loss, which represents the vast majority of those affected, accounting to over 38 million. So whatever the number of cases they're selling, it's 10, 20, 30,000 on an annualized basis, growing nearly 100% year over year. It's such a small fraction of 38 million cases addressable market size with practically no competition. Am I thinking this correctly? Yep, so um, you've basically gone through the math that I was about to do. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, we here uh, we do have a couple of sell side projections for the company's growth. Um, just very quickly here, JP Morgan is expecting Ergo to reach sales of 64 million this year, which would imply 95% growth, and then eventually reaching 233 million by 2025, or 39% CAGR. The analyst sees insurance channel contributions surging from 1,000 shipments in 2019 to 56.6 in uh, 2025. Um, the other important thing is that they are forecasting. Um, forecasting the non-insurance channel. So um, repeat purchase volume is expected to rise from 1.8 thousand to 22.9. And then if we look at BFA's project projections, they're only going out to 2022, for which they are uh, predicting eventual sales of 109 million, which is slightly lower than JP Morgan's forecast because looking at their model, it looks like they're assuming higher customer returns and some normalization from pandemic stay at home trends, which I'll touch on in a bit, and also lower average selling prices related to uh, promotions. Um, right, so on the next slide, this is where we start talking about the, the TAM, um, which can be a bit out of high in the sky metric. Uh, so do keep that in mind as we go through um, this slide. Now, Fahad, as you just said, in terms of market opportunity, hearing loss is currently the third largest medical condition with 44 million affected, and um, Ergo devices will cater to 30, 38 million out of the 44. And then if we take into account that Ergo is currently focusing on um, its, its marketing on people who are above median household income, that leaves us with 14 million people, one four. So if we assume an average selling price of 2,200, then an immediate addressable market in the US should work out to about $30 billion. 
and the thing is a lot of this market is unaddressed like roughly 73 percent of americans with hearing loss have opted to go without a hearing aid device either for financial reasons or due to social embarrassment as well as all the other downsides associated with um, traditional devices so i think ergo can address that and lastly the market also um, the company also plans to expand internationally uh, Fahad, I think Europe is going to be the, the first region of expansion because the vast majority of European companies have universal health systems as well as um, generous reimbursements. Like, for example, hearing aid expenses are 100% insured and covered in the UK, Scandinavia and Holland, and then several other countries are offering partial coverage as well. So, um, so I think this is what this is why I think um, Europe is going to be the first um, area there that they'll expand into. Excellent stuff. You know, there was a time when um, you know, in, in traditionally, if you look at the dental business, and that's why I gave an earlier example of Invisalign, the traditional way of getting if you had crooked teeth and you wanted to get them realigned and everything, you would go to see a dentist and they would put these. They would, they would put these metal things on each teeth and come, you know, connect them all together with a metal wire, which would be screwed into the back. It was painful. It looked ugly and hard to brush and special kind of brush you had to use. And it would stay on on your teeth basically for six months, nine months, a year or longer, depending on how, how bad was the treatment needed. And then Invisalign came along, which is produced by Align Tech. And that stock, Align Tech, used to be what a $30, $40 stock, you know, about seven, eight years ago. And now it's a $450 stock because it disrupted the entire dental industry. Similarly, there's a second example here of a similar disruptor we have, which is Dexcom, symbol DXCM. Traditionally, in order to test your blood sugar, your glucose level, you would use these strips to basically draw blood, pinch your finger, draw a, a drop of blood, put it into this machine using a using a little uh, using a little tab or something uh, or stick, and then you will know exactly what your blood sugar is. A painful exercise, not very comforting, and people had to carry it all the time. Then Dexcom comes around with a very simple glucose monitoring device, a patch that attaches to your body and connects directly to your cell phone. And then you're able to tell your glucose reading at real time anywhere without any kind of invasive procedure. It disrupted the entire industry and then Abbott Labs got into it. And now I feel like we have very much the same dynamics playing out in this one, which is the hearing aid. And for the very, all the many reasons that you've already explained here, you know, and nobody wants to hear a traditional hearing aid it looks ugly it's very very costly it is not very functional and now this company comes around so i expect it will go potentially on the same path as becoming a disruptor like dexcom was for over many years or like uh, or like the uh, align tech was in the dental space just my high level view there moving on you have a slide here that touches upon some bearish arguments tell me about this what risks do you see Okay, so um, the most relevant bearish arguments because we, we always want to look at both sides. So um, I, I had a look at just about every bearish argument against Ergo that I could come across. And these are the two that I think hold some weight. Uh, the first one is that the company relies on just one manufacturer currently, uh, which is HANA Microelectronics based in Thailand. Because Ergo is pretty much a young entrant in the industry. They cannot afford to disappoint their customers with delays should anything happen to HANA. And because of the proprietary nature of Ergo's hearing aids, it's not as if the company can quickly um, quickly set up production with another manufacturer. So this could be one of those tail risks for the stock. Um, and then the second bear argument is more to do with the fact that Ergo was such a beneficiary of COVID-19 due to its e-commerce and direct cons to consumer model um, that some of that might wear off as economies begin to reopen. So looking ahead, when there's no longer any more social distancing and all this staying at home, the company will need to ensure that their organic growth is going to vastly outpace any offsetting effects from the reopenings. Because um, again, this is a, a loss-making company, and so the growth must not slow. 
Yeah, on the loss making side of the thing, as long gross margins is the real story here with the 65% gross margins, which is very, very uh, high. I think market, as long as the top line revenue growth is staying strong, I think the market will take a pass to abnormally high SG&A expenses, which is below the gross margin line and they, as, because they have to spend all that money to continue to expand into new geographical territories such as Europe and such. So I don't think loss making business is a concern here with the top line growth growth rate is staying quite strong. And I also agree, I think COVID may cause some of the growth rate to you know, to, to decelerate a bit. It's not going to stay at 100% year over year, probably will decelerate down in, in the aftermath of COVID. But still, the secular trend should remain quite positive for quite some time for the, com for the company. Uh, that concludes it, folks. Uh, fantastic presentation. I'm very excited about this name. I just would like to point out uh, one real quick thing here that the company will report earnings tomorrow, November 19th, after market close. And this will be the first quarter since the company did the IPO. So there's going to be a lot of new learning curve that's going to be involved here. And we're going to learn new things um, to, that will be discussed in the conference call. So I'm looking forward to hearing that uh, presentation from the company. All right, Chronicle, thank you very much for doing this. Fantastic stuff. And that's it from us. We'll see you next time.